Good morning, Perimeter Point Church. We want to thank you for joining us this morning. As always, I want to encourage you to uh, share this on your social media through Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You click the little bell and you'll get a reminder every time that we gather. And then today is a special day. We are going to have Holy Communion at the end of the service. So I would ask that you get some bread and some water or juice so you can uh, join us for that part of our worship celebration. We're going to teach you guys a new song. We're not going to actually teach it to you by singing like this. But it's a new song called Battle Belongs. And again, the whole idea of this song is that we put our trust in God, that no matter what fails around us, whatever systems, structures, whatever things happen around us, that we put our trust in God and he never changes and he never fails. He's faithful and true. So let's worship together.
We also want to ask all of uh, those of you here today that have Facebook, always check in, uh, write a review, do all that stuff we do on social media because it's one of the key ways that we get the word out about our church. Uh, but I want, to, I want to just, you know, it's been on my heart just this week that um, just knowing a lot of what's going on with this church family, I just know that people are dealing with a lot of different types of struggles. In fact, even noticing just people that aren't here and knowing some of the particular things that they may be going through, it kind of burdens me because I know sometimes uh, when we're going through a lot of struggles, we tend to distance ourselves from the thing that we really need the most, which is to get in God's house, get with God's people, so we can experience God's presence. Um, but I'm, I'm keenly aware that with things going on, a lot of people have uh, maybe even be battling a spirit of depression or discouragement. There may be some people in here that just got a doctor's uh, notice that has set them on edge. They may have um, a child that's going through some struggles that are causing them to uh, uh, you know not know exactly what to do they're make, making bad behavioral choices at, at school could be a number of things it could be um, that you have some financial challenges right now it could even be somebody online is dealing with eviction an eviction notice could be you just got laid off from your job I mean there's all kinds of things and then and then here's another thing is that sometimes we can just get distant from God we can just be in a dry season with God um, and, and make no mistake about it, I've been there where you just feel like you're kind of spinning your wheels. You, you don't feel that vibrant relationship with him that you once did. You don't, you don't go around in your daily walk just enjoying life or feeling the joy of God's presence because you just feel like you're going through the motions. Don't necessarily feel that you have that closeness to God. Maybe you're in a place where you just feel kind of unproductive in fulfilling your purpose. Like you know God has put something on your heart to do, but you just feel like, you know, I'm kind of spinning my wheels and, and I don't really feel like I'm even hearing from God close enough to know what it is that I'm supposed to be doing and so it leaves me frustrated in my spiritual walk and I don't feel like I even want to do this sometimes so you have a sense of spiritual apathy. Now maybe somebody in here is dealing with the whole job thing. Could be somebody is in here or online that is feeling underqualified for the job that you just got hired for. You're thinking to yourself, how on earth am I going to be able to do what? I know I got the job. I know I got the promotion. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all that this job requires. Then there's somebody else who's underqualified or overqualified and you're frustrated in the pos position that you're in right now. You're just waiting for a change. You're tired of your coworkers. You're tired of your supervisor. You're just ready to move on. You know, the truth be told is you can be going through all kinds of conflict and calamity in this place today. So many things can be plaguing your life and nobody knows nor understands the depths of your pain. The reality is, is that there's another one that I struggle with sometimes is where we base our existence more on what we do than who we are. That's one of the performance treadmill kind of situations you can get yourself in where you start to value yourself and value your relationship even with God and with others based on what you drive, what job you have, how many degrees you have behind your name, what you've accomplished, what have you done in recent months and years that shows that you're worthy of something. Because we, we based our success on what we do and not on who we are. And here's, an, here's another one, and this, this one, the people in this church, those that are here and even those that have left know about me, is sometimes I can get performance dri driven about my walk with Christ rather than personhood driven in my worship toward God. What do I mean? I can be so focused on all the things that I feel God has called me to do to carry out the mission of the church, and I can get so much to doing the things of God I forget to remember who I'm doing them for right. and what motivates me to do them in the first place. We, we can become, in other words, we can become human doings as opposed to human beings. And the reality is, is if in the Christian walk you become human deans, doings in, instead of human beings, it's not going to take long before you start getting frustrated with your walk with God. There's somebody in this place and online that you do the rituals of going to church, you pay your tithes, 
You open up the Bible and you read the Word. Uh, you come and you serve at church. But then you're asking yourself still, still, why am I doing all this stuff? And I still don't feel like this is all really God wants me to have in living an abundant life for Him. I know I'm relating to a few people in this place on one level or another, and you feel some discouragement, you feel even perhaps some depression, you feel like you don't know when things are going to turn around, and you, and, you, and you feel like you're just messing up, that you're not getting it together, and that you wonder if you're ever going to get out of this dry season, and you're tired of being distant from God. And you're, and, you're, and, you're, and you're here today. It took everything to get up and watch on video even, let alone come. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But then I got to remind myself of what God's word says about his inexhaustible grace. You've got to get an idea in your head. No matter how many times you've blown it, no matter how many times you think you've gotten it wrong, no matter how many times you feel like you failed at this thing, no matter how much you've tried this, tried that, tried this and the other thing, and you still don't feel like you're getting to where God is trying to take you, you've got to be reminded that we serve a God of inexhaustible grace. There's an unlimited supply, a reservoir that he wants to pour from in your life that if you just realize not what you have or what you do, but whose you are and who you are in Christ, you will have a different outlook on everything you brought into this place that you're trying to carry. And you will leave it before you go because you will know who you really are in him and all that he wants to give you, all that you have in him. And you will walk away with a greater sense of determination. I'm going to live not at this low level living Christian living. I'm going to live at the level that God has ordained and has called me to. I'm not living for the status quo anymore. I'm going toward my purpose and my destiny. Amen. You've got to, you've got to realize there is, this, there is this just fullness reservoir of blessing that God has given on every one of his children. Do I have anybody in this place that recognizes that there's much more that God has for you than what you're giving to him right now? Maybe it is that you're not expected and you've got to lift your prayer to another level of faith. You can't just be following him at this mediocrity level. You can't just keep having this woe is me mentality. You can't just keep beating yourself up for every failure. Man, God has done too much and paid far, far too high a price for you to sit there and have a pity party and even have a disconnect with this, this message of how blessed and favored and honored you are. Amen. In him, it says, in John 1 and 16, it says, for of his fullness we have all received one grace upon grace. I love the other translation in the New International that says, for of his fullness we have all received one blessing on top of another. It's kind of like uh, I went ocean fishing uh, this last week. Uh, it's nice to have a hookup with a guy who blessed me to go out on a boat and go ocean fishing. But, you know, before we got into the ocean, you know, the waves, they crash onto the shore. And I don't know about you, but one thing I've noticed about the waves crashing on the shore is that they may get lower and higher depending on the tide and the winds and all that other stuff that I don't know about. But the reality is, is one thing I know about the waves, they keep on crashing. And that's what I know about the blessings of God, but I don't always receive it and I don't always live at this level of living and thinking and faith. But the reality is, is in his fullness, we have all received one blessing, one wave crashing of favor, one wave crashing of a financial breakthrough, one wave crashing of a promotion, one wave crashing of peace in the midst of storm, one wave crashing of the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, one wave crashing of you have the mind of Christ, one wave crashing of you've been forgiven of all your sin. One wave crashing of you're more than a conqueror. One wave crashing of he's going to supply. Somebody's not getting it. One wave crashing that he will supply. That he's giving you peace that surpasses all understanding. One wave crashing that you're overwhelmingly victorious in him. Oh, one wave crashing that he will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. One wave crashing that he's your refuge and your strength, your ever-present help in time of trouble. Oh, you need another wave? Oh, he's your healer. He's your provider. He's your protector. He's your peacemaker. One wave crashing on Potter. Don't live at that level of hill. Woe is me. He ain't done nothing for me. Don't look too far back. You know how much he's blessed you. Come on and remember the different times that he has shown his favor upon you. Come on and remember.
remember the fullness of his glory that caught you out of darkness and brought you to his marvelous light. See, somebody starts to have a cognitive disconnect of his past faithfulness and he's just as faithful in your current situation but you're not putting your mind on things above you're trying to look at this garbage right in front of you and God is saying in his fullness you have all received one grace upon another grace one wave of blessing upon another blessing and somebody's still not getting this message I don't have much more I want to say today so I want you to understand that you are rooted and grounded in the love of Christ that you have faith to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask or thing. If you just step into what God is saying he can do, it may be like you have nothing to give, but do you have enough of this? A step to go into it and see if he might just meet you with his inexhaustible grace? Because I've come to discover, I don't really have to bring a whole lot to the table. I, I got to do is bring my faith, and I just got to believe that he is able to do exceedingly and above. The problem is, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. But those who believe in him and who call on his name, he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek after him. He made us alive together with Christ because by grace you have been saved. You see, that's part of the modern day problem with the church. Is we don't know everything that has been done in and through our lives. And we fail to walk not only in gratitude for what he's done, but we don't know it enough and internalize it enough and fill ourselves with it enough and believe it enough and meditate on it enough. Here's what Joyce Meyer says. I told him yesterday in class. I said, as the mind goes, the man follows. If you're filling your mind with all this junk, what the world says about you, what the world is trying to get you to chase after, what the world is trying you to be convinced of that you need, rather than who you already are in Christ, which tells you you are more than a conqueror. You are, you are uh, an overcomer. You are all these different things. But what ends up happening is we don't know who we are and whose we are. And then we come in here and we don't always give him that adoration because we don't reflect on how much it costs for him to get to that place with us. That's why we're putting communion at the end of service today because hopefully by the end of this message we really internalize what has taken place in our lives and it brings us to a greater elevation of where we're trying to go in him. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. Verse 16. But, but there's a word there, a phrase there, tough. The riches of his glory. Uh, that's what we've been trying to get you to see. The riches of his glory. He says that you would, he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in the spirit. But here's the thing. The riches of his glory are infinite. And they can only be partially described by our limited finite minds. The riches of his glory, it's unlimited. It's unquantifiable and it's unsurpassed. Psalm 115 and 3 says, Our God is in the heavens. Our God is in the heavens and he does all that he pleases. The implication of Psalm 115 and 3 is that God has the right and the power to do whatever pleases him. He's sovereign. He's Lord. He's in control. And my guess is, since he's in control and he does what all he pleases, is that he does what he does to make him happy. Wow. All right. I mean, he didn't have to create us jokers, but he made us to enjoy him and glorify him forever. My guess is, is he's not up there mad at you because of the mistakes you've made. He's cheering you on because he knows how much he's blessed you. Wow. And the thing is, is we pray and we tap in to such a little bit of the riches and we don't go for the full riches of his glory, which is what he wants to lay on you every single day. <laughs> Excuse me. Man, can I get some more water? Excuse me. Got some more water back there? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get some more here. I just need a little more. Thanks. Amen. Okay, thanks. So what I'm saying, by the way, you see this cup? What do you think of this? Is it, is it half empty or is it half full? How do you see it? Half full. Oh, such optimists here. I'm so impressed. Goodness. Half full. half full, half full. All right, all right. Half full it is. Half full ain't enough for me. 
Half empty ain't enough for me. But here's how we live in the Christian life. We don't know the word, so we go, well, oh, I hope he gets me through that next, that next paycheck. Man, I'm struggling today. God help me lift my spirits. Amen. God, I am struggling. I, this, this communication thing with my, my wife, I need to get on one accord. Just, man, set her right. <laughs> ah, it's a little over half full. Yeah, we're making progress. Half full, that's good. Half full, half full, that's great. And we just keep living every day of our Christian life. Just getting a little bit of drip, of drip of God. A little mercy. A little grace. Can I get a little favor? Oh, God, it's been a decent day today. I had a little bit of joy. Oh, I'm just, just glad it's Friday. Now I can go and I'll show up Sunday for an hour and give them a little splash. But we're all living below the riches of His glory. In His fullness, he, we have all received not just favor and blessing, not just a little bit of peace and a little bit of joy, not just a little bit of abundance, not just a little bit of favor, not just a little bit of mercy, not just a little bit of grace, not just a little bit of an open door, not just a little bit of joy, not just a little bit of peace, not just a little bit. No, no, no. i got to aim fire for the fullness of joy that surpasses all understanding in every single day. I need to live in that presence of God where there's fullness of joy, where there's peace that lasts forever, where the joy of the Lord is my strength, where He's my all God Almighty that saves me, that redeems me, that bought me with a price. Now I'm to glorify Him with my body because He's done so much much. I'm not going to live at that little half cup full type of positive thinking. No, I'm going to live in faith in the presence of God. I'm going to expand our faith to believe Him for more. We're going to be rooted and grounded in the truths of who we are in Christ and what He's done so we can start believing Him for more than just a half a glass of water. I, 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 there's not much more I can say except we just got to believe it. Amen. Yep. Praise the Lord. We made a little bit of a mess and we poured it out here and it may have been simple or whatever, but I, don't, I think if there's anything you're going to remember out of everything I've said all day, it's going to be watching that water yeah. flow into that cup and overflow of this table because that is how God sees you and sees me every single day and moment of our lives. Hear me, church. He's not mad at you. He's not angry. He's not frustrated. He just wants to pour his blessings on you and have you walk in the fullness of joy. You got all the provisions you need in Christ. You got all the joy you need in Christ. You got all the hookups and open doors and let me get this hookup. Let me get this door. Let me go tap this dude. No, you got all that you need to give you what it is that you're really searching for. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's there. And how do we access it, church? By faith. We see it as abstract. We see it as a maybe when I'm doing right with God. Maybe when I'm acting holy. Maybe when I'm getting it all right. Making all the, make the, all the things right. No. You start with this is how God sees me every day when I wake up. This is how God sees me every day when I go to bed. This is what I have when I go on the job. This is what I have when I'm going to go to work. This is what I have in my marriage. This is what I have in favor with my finances. This is what I have in my health. This is what I have. God is pouring his abundance on me. Do I have enough faith to receive what God has already said I have in Christ Jesus? It's already done. Can you put your faith high enough to get where he's trying to take you? Because whatever you can believe on this side of heaven, he says, get it as high as you possibly can go. And then I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly yeah. above all you could ask or think. We're going to increase our faith. There you go. We're going to know the truth of God's word about what he says we have, 
what he says we can do, who he says we are. But I refuse to tell people this below level, woe is me, not going to make it, I fail all the time. Can't. No, start with this is what's going on right now no matter how you feel. It's what do you believe about what the word says? He says this. He believes this. He sees this in your life. So what do you believe? Whose opinion are you going to believe? I am going to believe this from now. In fact, I, I just, I'm going to believe this. I am just going to believe that. That's what's happening in my life every single day. Every Brand new mercies that are new every morning. Oh, his grace is sufficient. Oh, he supplies all my needs. Oh, his strength is made perfect. Oh, he'll give me what I need to preach. Oh, he'll give me a message when I need it. Oh, he'll give me joy when I'm discouraged. Oh, he'll give me happiness when I feel like thrown in the towel. Oh, he's foolproof and I trust him and I love him and he's faithful and he'll never leave me or forsake me and he'll give me everything I need every single time. Why don't you worship him? and praise his name in this place because he's worthy of all the praise all the adoration all the honor it all belongs to him give him worship give him praise give him glory give him honor he's worthy to be praised hallelujah 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to. You've been living below this. In fact, you've been you've been living out here. Because you haven't yet even begun to tap into what's in the picture. Because you don't even, you, you, you have to start by knowing the picture exists. And you start by knowing the picture exists. I'm trying to tell you the picture is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was sent 2,000 years ago to make it so that he can open up a way for you to be able to get back in right relationship with the one who created you. Way back, and I'm talking to you online, way back Many thousands of years ago, God had a perfect relationship with man. And he said, man, you can have all this water pouring out like I'm demonstrating. You can have it. You can have all the land. You can have all the, all the trees. You can enjoy the birds I created. I'm even going to pull a rib out of your side and make a woman suitable for you. I'm going to give it all to you. But this one tree right here in the garden, you can't touch this one. Why? Because I, I'm going to give you freedom to choose to love and worship me. I'm going to give you freedom to love me. I'm not going to make you a robot. So yeah, there's one thing you've got to avoid. Are you willing to choose me over that one thing in the garden? Well, man made the wrong choice. And it says, by one man's sin, sin entered the world. And death through sin. And it separated us from God. And God says that we get punished for that. I know you don't like that. But you want a just heart surgeon. You want to... You want a just real estate agent. You want, you want a teacher that's going to teach your kids with integrity. You want truth and righteousness and justice with the people that are caring for you. How much more would you want a God who's going to say and do what he says he's going to say and do? So he says, I got to punish sin, but I know you can't solve that sin problem in yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my son on the scene, Jesus Christ. I'm going to send my spirit, Godhead, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm going to take up human flesh. I'm going to send Jesus, who is my son, who was with me before the foundations of the world. We are one God, worship in spirit and in truth, but we manifest in three different persons. Father, that we worship today. Son, that we worship today. Holy Spirit, that we worship today. But the son had a special special role within that Godhead. I'm going to step in, Jesus said, and I'm going to live the sin.
sinless life and pay the penalty for the sin that you cannot pay. And I'm going to shed my blood. I'm going to die. I'm going to pay the penalty so that you can come back to the Father. And then the Father, the minute you say yes to the Son, the Father then says, I'm going to fill you up with my spirit. And then I'm going to pour that spirit. And I'm going to give you so much power that you can live this life in a more honorable way to me. The question I have for you in this room you can email me at will, W-I-L-L, at perimeterpoint.org. And you can let me know, today, preacher, today I heard you. Today I said yes to this Jesus, and I know he touched me, and he's in me, and I'm new in Christ, but I need you to show me, preacher, how to live. Well, the best thing I can ever do as a preacher is to tell you what the truth of the word says, and then start helping you a little bit with living this victorious life. So if that's you in this place... You've heard this a million times, but today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Who needs to make a decision for Jesus? If that's you, I want you to meet me at this altar right now. You confess Christ before me. You don't hesitate. It's, it's courage that it takes to come forward to him. Will you give your life to Christ today? If you're online, will you email me at will at perimeterpoint.org and tell me you've received Christ so that I can follow up and send you some literature. I would love, it would be my privilege to do that. Let's pray and ask God to have His way as we conclude this service. Father, we thank you. It is in your fullness that we have received one blessing on top of another. We are reminded that we have aimed too low in the truths about who we are and whose we are. And so we now ask you to forgive us even for our unbelief. And we ask you to take the limits off of our faith. Father, now I pray for that woman, that boy, that girl, that man that has not experienced the true forgiveness of sin because they have not understood the magnitude of their sin and how much they need a Savior found in the sacrifice and the love of Jesus Christ. I pray that if they want to follow Him today, they would come to this altar, they would email me, and we could teach them about that. And then, God, if there's someone in this place, they know they need, to, they need to join a church and grow in the grace and the knowledge of God that we're trying to teach here so that we can live up to that standard and live above what this poverty lifestyle that we have in our thinking and in our actions. God, bring them to a church that is trying to rightly divide your word and give that truth. So as a man goes, the mind, as a mind goes, the man follows, will fill the mind with things that will cause them to follow in the right direction. Please move, God. By your spirit, give somebody boldness and courage to step out. I'm joining the church. I'm rededicating. I'm giving my life to Christ. As the praise team shall lead us, if that's you, won't you come? Won't you come? In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you come? 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 to play in the background we're about to celebrate Holy Communion Holy Communion as it's being served at this time is is for those that have made this profession of faith uh, I was often thrown when I was in early churches and they told me don't take it if you haven't received Christ it felt kind of exclusive but then I read in Corinthians that it says you got to take this communion with with that same reverence that I was talking about and, and, and know the sacrifice that Christ made or else it says you're taking it in an unworthy manner 
and they were they were getting sick in the church in the early church because they were taking this 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 communion and making it very light and like a, a celebratory thing and a and a feast rather than a reverential time of honoring the Lord's death and so if you've if you've accepted Christ that's the only way you can take it in a worthy manner so just know that you've received Christ you partake if you don't you just wait until God you know grabs a hold of your heart and says man this is the way to go and we're 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 going to be shouting from the rooftops if that's a decision you're still in the in your foreseeable future to make um, as also we know that as it's being passed around that's what Jesus did with the disciples there in the upper room he he gave it to his disciples and and uh, it was a, it was just before he was going to go and he was going to live out what this last supper would project um, which is he he took as we're continuing to pass out the elements he took the the cup and the cup it was crimson in color it symbolized the Lord's blood Bible says without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sin so that blood was shed so that that we could be forgiven of our sin and then the the bread it represents his body it's 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 unleavened bread symbolizing what this without sin the bread is unleavened symbolizing he was without sin so he was broken his body was beaten bruised and 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 he bled so that we, he could become the acceptable sacrifice to us. And so we gather with his disciples and he said, look, when we gather, this is the last supper I'm going to have with you. But when you celebrate and honor the Lord's Supper, he says, as often as you do this unto me, that you do it in remembrance as unto me. So I'm going to ask you to stand even now for a moment of, of just silent reflection. If there's anything that you need to confess real quick, have a clear heart when you take this communion. Just silently say, Father, forgive me. Anything you can think of that you may have unco unconfessed in your life, just say, forgive me for that and name that sin. And just confess it. Remember, the pitcher's pouring right now. <laughs> He's forgiven you, but, but you've got to acknowledge it. Confess it. Come on, come clean. Come clean. Let the, let, the, let the water, the living water, wash you clean so you're not convicted and you leave here just as discouraged and feeling like a failure as you did when you came in. No, confess it. For, forgiveness is right there. It's flowing in your life right now. You're more than a conqueror. He's forgiven you. He's set you free. You may be stuck, but pic picture the picture. That's how he sees it. Thank you, Jesus. And we take communion in honor of that, that he purchased that ability and view that we have. And we take it with gratitude. Now, if you take that broken wafer and you repeat after me, as I shall eat this broken wafer, I am reminded of Jesus' body that was bruised for my sins. Let us eat and be thankful. Likewise, taking the cup if you'll repeat after me as I shall drink the fruit of the vine I am reminded of Jesus' blood that was shed for my sin let us drink and be thankful amen amen we worship the Lord by way of giving let's praise God for that opportunity uh, we also give online uh, we give by mail we give by text um, we certainly give in person and we appreciate the generosity of every giver. We're able to do some incredible things through your generosity, through your giving. Hold high your hands. Let's receive the benediction. Father, it's been a good day already. Been the day that you have made and we have rejoiced and been glad in it. And as we see that picture in our minds of the pitcher pouring out water, we see in the spirit how you have filled us. And as you fill us with your spirit, I pray, God, that you would go before us to guide us, that you would be behind us to push and to encourage us, that you would remain above us to cover us and beneath us to sustain us. Most of all, Holy Spirit, would you be in us to fill us that our lives might bring glory and honor to you. We count it done by faith because we see it now. Our eyes see it now. And we walk in faith and assurance that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Jesus Christ, we go to serve him and to bring him glory. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. God bless you.